Hey, welcome back to Gearhead Daily. And uh, I just got my new machine. And if there's anything you know about me, I like uh, tools and I like expensive tools. Also, let's just get one thing out of the way. I wear cowboy hats now. Uh, I really thought uh, I would look stupid in them, but if I just didn't look so darn cute, I wouldn't be wearing it. So, I want to run you through my uh, brand new tool that I hear. It's a joiner planter, planer combo, which is how adults would say it. And uh, I'm not AVE. I'm not going to tear it apart. I'm not going to tell you the ins and the outs and how it works on the inside and all that good jazz. You want him to do one of these? Send him one. Do that sort of thing. So, what I will tell you though, is I've had some time to play with it, and it is the helical head version, and it is simply flipping amazing. I had a 6 inch jointer before, and I had a 12 inch, uh, sorry, 13 inch like DeWalt 735X uh, planer, which was loud! It was super, super loud, and going to this thing, it is whisper quiet by comparison. So. I want to run you through some of the things, give you my review on it, and uh, you know, just kind of give you some overall impressions. I've had some time to play with it, and I am making some drawer fronts for my kitchen cabinet, and I want to make sure that they look good, so I ended up getting this, and I had some wider pieces and some things coming up, so I did need a full 12 inch kind of jointer to joint uh, some edges. The 6 inches just wasn't wide enough and even building sleds, I have to build a sled every single time I wanted to run something through the planer, so it was a thing. So I went in and I spent the money on this, took some jobs that I had, took that cash, squirreled it away, uh, sold the joiner and both the planer as well, and then got uh, one of these. So uh, one of the things that a lot of people will complain about is this uh, little blade style thing. And you're used to that kind of pork chop thing that kind of moves out of the way when your jointing. I will tell you that in my experience this is much better. I don't like the pork chop because even when you do, that thing does move. You exposes your hands and other things and elbows and shirts and you know all sorts of stuff to be able to get into the, the blade mechanism. So that, uh, I don't like that design. This one, no matter what you do, unless you I mean, shove your hand underneath the blade, the uh, cover blade thing, there is no possible way you're going to get hurt. And then even though it does come with some push sticks, I found they're not really necessary. It's just a little bit uh, getting used to kind of moving your hands over uh, the little safety blade here. So let's run through, uh, I'll just, you know what, let's just start with kind of an overview of the machine and then I'll uh, show you how to convert the thing. We'll run a couple bores through it and see how she do. So let's get to it. All right. First things first, this thing comes with a pretty short cord. It's only, I don't know, about four feet long. And you will need to make your own. I had to as well. Uh, you will have to splice on an end. This is 220. It will not work on 110, period. So what I did was I extended my cord with another 15 foot uh, from the wall back over here and then just kind of spliced on the appropriate 220 end. So you will need that to work. That's, that, is, that is a uh, prerequisite. You need 220, period, but you will have to put on your own end. Okay, so that's, that's the one thing. The cord is pretty short, so you end up have, probably have to make your own coming from the wall to extend it and move it around and do whatnot. It does not come with wheels. So I did get, uh, as you can kind of see, the, it's like a Bora, like a 700 pound, 650 pound, whatever it is. I got the, the bigger one so I can move this thing around. This is 600 pounds shipped and it is 530 pounds. And I can tell you, me and a buddy did wrestle it on to the cart itself, uh, but that thing is heavy. We had to use a forklift to get it off and on the back into my shop and other things. So it is heavy, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. Real quick, first thing you'll notice, this adjusts your height up and down. Uh, Counterclockwise raises the blade up and down. Clockwise, and it brings it back down. Very simple in-feed and out-feed uh, probably one of the easier ones to use and also uh, just generally easiest to maneuver. A lot of them had these cranks that over time they would kind of, you know, they'd rust or they'd get, you know, whatever. So this one, uh, at least as far as the outfeed table, you unscrew this and then move this lever. Very simple, outfeed moves up and down. I can tell you that mine came co-planed already. Uh, I have heard people on the internet, and I, before I did a lot of research, before I bought this, and they said, oh, it didn't come co-planed, it is impossible, it took me like four or five hours to get it co-planed. I can tell you, this came a dead flat. I don't know if I just lucked out or what. But mine came perfectly co-planed. To move the in-feed table is simple as this. You unscrew this part here, and then literally, look at this, I, just, I barely 
barely have to move it with my hand and it moves up and down. It's actually really good, okay? The other thing up the front is you've got your green button and you've got your red button. This is the only real problem I have with the machine. The machine is pretty good. Here's the, here's the issue that I have. The green button, really, really easy to start. Okay, watch this. Barely touched it, okay? And that's on, that's not very loud. You can tell how I don't need hair, hearing protection at all. But the, the green on button, very easy. But the stop button requires me to kind of mash it a little bit. And in my opinion, you got an emergency, you need to be able to hit that stop button really, really quick. So it's not a deal breaker, but it is something that the green start button is a little too easy and the stop button is a little too hard, okay? That's, that's my one issue. If you want to move this up into the uh, uh, planing mode, all you have to do is release these two knobs here, and then, basically, this comes right up. This is the helical head, and I went and spared no expense and got the helical head because guys were telling me, oh my god, it cuts perfect, and anytime you need to change the blades, all you got to do is rotate one of the heads just 90 degrees, and you get yourself a whole new set of blades. Now, it does take 60 of these things, and it's like $80 for 10 so when it does come time to change them, yeah, that's not going to be fun. But what guys are saying is, 10 years later, they still have the original blades. It does come with some replacements, but for the most part, uh, guys are saying that they get multiple years out of this. So if for whatever reason the situation or the, uh, the, the bed itself becomes not coplaned, you have a couple options. There are uh, one, two... Uh, there's there's three, there's a third one back here that are hidden in here, that is one adjustment, and then you have to uh, uh, kind of undo those, adjust it up down this way, and then also same thing on this side for your infeed table, and then also to kind of go this way, you have these two on either side, that is how you adjust it. Mine came perfect from the factory as is, I checked like four times, I swear I lucked out. So here's the interesting piece, when you want to move from jointing to planing, it takes about, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds. The big thing is you will have to move this. Uh, this is your, uh, you know, the, the, the dust collector. And to move that, I don't even take it off. All you have to do is rotate it. Locks into place with this locking pin here. And then, normally, you would feed it jointing going this way. Well, to plane, you go this way. And here is your up-down dial. This will raise the bed and lower the bed. Um, did have to clean that a little bit. And the interesting thing is this, you know, gives you a little gauge here on the side, and some guys have put digital ones. I don't know, I don't, I don't do the digital bit. Uh, this will lock this piece in place so it doesn't move. And then you actually have a little arrow right here will tell you, and I noticed that this little arrow tells me exactly how much room I need to be able to move this back into position. So you will have to bring it back down to move this, rotate it backwards so that you can go back into jointing mode. This is your power on feed, so to uh, move it from, tell, you're basically telling the machine, nope, we're going to do this uh, thing now. We are have to, you know, lock it in place so it goes the other direction and then again you got your lock and then your your uppy downy part that's basically how you transfer let me show you how easy it is to do it'll take about 30 seconds all right let me just quick show you how easy it is to go from jointer to planer pretty simple Let's go back again. Ah, haha, see? You gotta lower lower the, the table there to that little line I showed you earlier. Yeah, there we go. 
Got it. Okay. Little pin. It goes faster if you're not a moron. There's a little pin here that won't, so it doesn't slam on you. It's pretty heavy. But it's got two big springs on either side. We lock. Make sure our power converter is in the right order. Yes, it is. And we're back to it. Pretty simple. So let me show you a couple examples of why I got the helical head versus the non-helical head. And I'll tell you what happens if you want to switch from cutter knives to a helical head. All right, so this is a piece of birch that is uh, 1S, so that means that uh, only one side is good, and it's usually this side. I can tell by it's been cut, but um, eh, needs a, a slight bow in the middle, so I want to get rid of that. Also, uh, neither of the faces have been ground down. So if you want the helical head on the other version, there's a 12-inch knife version of this. Keep in mind, when you are switching from uh, knives to helical head, uh, the big cutters that you see here, uh, you will need to also change the gears because this moves at a much slower pace. And one of the things that I do like about this is how quickly, once you turn the button off, it stops. Let me show you. All right, so I've removed the fence here, just kind of slid it out of the way to show you how this works and how quickly it stops from a rotation. Because remember, this is moving at a slower speed than your average cutting knife that is just kind of going like this back and forth. So if you do choose to upgrade your machine with a new head, you do have to change gears as well because that changes the torque ratio because it's moving at a slower rotation. So in the long run, you're not really saving a ton of money, if any at all, if you have to uh, go from knives to helical head. So uh, if just kind of keep that in mind for future, future reference. So let's go ahead and again, the super easy button push. Very quiet. Uh, don't need hearing protection, but have it, you have to have a dust collector on. So let's see how quickly this stops. Let's push the button. Actually fairly impressed with how quickly that stops. It's a nice feature. I like that because I have a bandsaw that just goes and goes and goes. Some of you may be wondering about the fence. I apologize. I probably spliced this part in here somewhere because I completely forgot to tell you about this part. Uh, but it does. Uh, it it uh, it does go 90. It's a it's just a just a hair hair past uh, the zero degree mark here. But it will go to a full 45. So if you do want to put a chamfer, I always leave mine in 90 degree mode just because that's normally what I'm doing, and then use a chamfer bit over there if I on the router if I need it. But uh, this does slide almost all the way back and forth. Uh, so, and it does recommend that you, uh, you know, slide this every once in a while just so you're not using the same little blades all the time. But uh, as you can see, you know, you really got to work to get your hand inside there. This blade, in my opinion, is a much better design than the old pork chop thing that moves out of the way because it does temporarily show the blade as it's moving and exposes you to to the exposed blade where this one does not you can still run your piece under it no problem and uh, you know if you don't like the nanny state yeah get rid of it let me show you how this works and how well that helical head really does its job all right so we've got our piece of birch and i think i'm going to do this size you can kind of hopefully you can kind of see that it's got uh Got a lot of bumps on it, but I will uh, face this side and uh, make sure that this is nice and flat, and then I'll run it through uh, both, uh, give it uh, basically a 2S side, all right? So here we go. Let's go ahead and turn the dust collector on. It might be a tad loud, but I'll adjust the levels later.
haven't seen the other side yet, so let's, let's take a look. How did she do? It's a little bit more than a sixteenth uh, or so, maybe just a tad more than a sixteenth of an inch. So, the finish that this leaves is pretty respectable. I might uh, give it one more uh, quick light pass, but as you can see, it's shiny. It's very smooth to the touch. The helical head really does its job very well. So there's a couple, couple little nicks in here, probably from where the board's not perfectly flat, but we'll, uh, now that we've got two sides, I can run it through my planer. So let's run this through the planer and see how she do. All right, so you saw me do it on this side. You can see how nice and shiny it is. Again, puts a very nice little coat on it. I mean, you may not even have to sand this. It's, it's, it's that nice. So let's run it through the planer, kind of give you a rough idea of kind of how that works. We'll use our other side here. This does need to be three quarters of an inch when I'm done with it uh, because this is going to be a drawer front. So here we go. All right, so it went through. It went through pretty smoothly. You can kind of hear it moving. And here is our finished side. And you can see just by the reflection, I haven't touched this, I haven't sanded it, I haven't done anything. Look how smooth that is. I do like that. It is uh, it's a very nice finish. So if you have the ability to get the helical head, you have the cash flow, I highly suggest doing it. So overall, this thing is very heavy and it's expensive but it does two jobs of two different machines and it does save space. Space is not really an issue in my shop, but uh, it is nice to know that I don't have to, uh, you know, have two machines if I don't need them. And I have, two, have a helical head. So if you did that for both machines, you had a 12 inch jointer and a 12 inch planer with both with helical heads, you're actually either just north of one of these or maybe just under. I mean, the price is almost negligible in my, in my, in my estimation. So, that said, uh, would I buy this machine again? Hell yeah, I'd buy this machine again. This thing is awesome. It does uh, basically everything I needed to do, plus a little bit extra, and, as you saw, leaves an excellent finish. So, even if you don't buy this machine, the helical head, totally worth the money. So, that's it. That's all I got. Have a good one.